Within our bodies is a marvelous network of nerves, nerves that carry the signals and carry them to the brain. Carry the signals? But how, Doc? By electricity. See, the nerves of this network are made up of the long, thin fibers of living nerve cells, nerve cells that can make their own electricity. Luigi Galvani, experimenting with what was then known as animal electricity, accidentally touched the big muscle in the leg of a frog with two pieces of metal that were in contact with each other. The electrical stimulus caused the frog's leg to jump. That was almost 200 years ago. And the arguments that grew out of Galvani's experiment led to Volta's discovery of the principle of the electric battery. Doc, don't tell me I got an electric battery somewhere inside of me. No, not batteries, but nerve cells. Hundreds of millions of them, each capable of making electric charges. Bill, turn on this machine, will you? This is an actual recording of the electrical impulses going from a living eye to a living brain. H.K. Hartline of the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research, who made this recording, is studying patterns of impulses in the optic nerve fibers and how these patterns serve as information for the brain. These impulses race through our sensory system whenever sense receptors trigger electrical discharges into the nerve fibers. Each nerve cell passes the impulse along by discharging its electricity to fire the next cell in the chain. The impulses jump along at speeds up to 100 miles an hour or more. These living cells are self-charging. They recover and are ready to fire again in a tiny fraction of a second. Doc, then this nerve network can carry all the different signals from all the different senses. Yes, that's a funny thing. The senses are all different. The signals are all alike. Yeah, but then how could the brain know which sense is sending the message? Well, you've just asked the big question. That brings us up to the brain. It's the areas in the brain, the specific areas where the signals end up, that tell us whether we are touching, seeing, hearing, tasting, or smelling. Ever since Johannes Müller, the German physiologist of the 19th century, recognized this, scientists have been trying to understand how the brain transforms information it receives into action, sensation, and thought.